final presentation um, is by Sharif Abdul Muhammad, if I pronounce that correctly. Yes. Okay, very good. From uh, Virginia Military Institute. And the topic will be uh, Sci Ed, a cyber infrastructure for computer education. Uh, and it is a this particular is this a 30 minute or it's, it's confusing here it says 445 to 615 515 but it means it's 60. What, what are you planning on talking? It's like 15. Hmm? Just because it's like 15. Yes, I think so. Yeah, but on here it said uh, on my sheet it just said a 60 minute session, but it's not a 60 minute session. Yeah, I'll try to finish on 60 minutes. Is it a, okay? Yeah, yeah, I want to make sure we're not <laughs> throwing you off here and uh, into something. So. Uh, so it's Syed, a cyber in infrastructure for computer education. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Sharif Abdelhamid, and I am uh, from VMI, assistant professor at Virginia Military Institute. And this work was done in collaboration with uh, my students, uh, uh, Tanner Mallory and Tristan Stewart. And uh, the title of the presentation is Syed Cyber Infrastructure for uh, Computer Education. So the goal of this work is to create a cyber environment uh, for uh, students, instructors, researchers to collaborate together, to share resources, to share learning material, and provide an uh, accessible uh, environment for uh, for everyone, um, this work was like motivated by the COVID nineteen situation, and uh, where uh, there was a shutdown to many institutions, and there was scattered efforts uh, from institutions and individuals about how we can respond to this situation. And also, that's one reason. The other reason is that we, uh, we felt that there is a need for a safe environment uh, for our kids, for our students, where they can reach out to a safe place and get uh, correct information uh, in a, instead of like going to outside sources and as you can know, the misinformation is everywhere these days. So this was one of the reasons also for this work. And the third reason is to provide uh, accessibility for resources. Could be learning resources, could be like computing resources or hardware resources, especially for uh, students or institutions who don't have much uh, capabilities to provide these things to students. Also to not just undergrad students or graduate students, but also for high school students or middle school students. So this is why, like multiple reasons motivated our work for uh, science. <clears throat> we found an existing gap that Whenever we look for cyber infrastructures or like cyber environments or people usually, uh, most of research focus on like how we use cyber infrastructures for research or for providing or delivering uh, computing resources or capabilities to people. And that's it. But very few focus on how we can use cyber infra infrastructures or cyber environments for education. And uh, if we look at agencies like NSF, DOD, and DOD, they support and they have, uh, for the last couple of years, a dedication for research related to cyber infrastructure. But most of the work was on research part, not the education part. We feel that cyber infrastructures can serve research, but also can serve the learning part and the education part. So this is also something uh, we noticed. So in order to reach our goals, we are building a cyber, uh, cyber environment, which is SIED. We are planning to integrate it in short courses 
we already started using it in uh, workshops like Cyber Smart uh, workshop for high school and middle school students uh, last year, 2021, and this year was actually last week in 2022. And we are teaching different topics in computer science and cybersecurity to high school students. And uh, we are starting with computer science students, but also we are trying to encourage other students from other departments like ECE or math department or similar departments to start to use this online environment. We are starting with Virginia, Lexington, but we are hoping that this efforts will cover in Virginia and will result not in one institution like VMI, but multiple institutions collaborating together. And this uh, environment, uh, this environment is extensible in a way that tools, learning tools can be plugged in or integrated so it can grow over time and it can serve the community in different ways. It is available online so anyone can log in, create an account and start using it. Um, so uh, to, to um, define our direction, where we are and where we are going, we did some related work. And uh, we, our approach was a, like a mixed method approach that combined qualitative uh, literature review. And also we did some bibliographic analysis. Uh, which requires some quantitative analysis. And uh, here in this part, we identified based on looking at relevant papers, we identified two main themes relevant to this area. The first theme focused on online teaching uh, pedagogic methods or techniques, and the other theme is focused about different factors that affect the learning effectiveness or experience. But because our, uh, because of literature review, like uh, when you are manually investigating different publications, it's a little bit slow because it is like more of qualitative, subjective. You have to go through these papers. Sometimes uh, we need to get some numbers. These numbers can help us give an overview and can help reveal some patterns or themes relevant to this area. Uh, so this was covered with the quantitative part or the bibliographic analysis. So the bibliographic analysis gave us a, a high level overview and the fine granularity is a qualitative part with the regular uh, literature review. In the bibliographic analysis, we collected uh, uh, several publications, like hundreds of publications from Microsoft Academics. It's an uh, open database that harvests thousands or millions of publications. We searched for keywords like online learning and cyber infrastructure. We extracted key terms and uh, uh, that showed up at least 10 times in the abstract title and the keyword section around 470 and we constructed a co-occurrence network. How many of these terms showed up and how many times they showed up with other terms? And we constructed a network consists of this number of nodes and links. A node represents a term or a keyword and the link means that these two keywords showed up in the same paper. And it revealed this network. And after we constructed the network, we did something called clustering. So we extracted the groups where the density within this group is higher than the density outside groups, where these key terms tend to uh, show up more 
often like usually together than showing up with other uh, keywords. So there are around four main clusters show up. If you look like uh, at a high level way, these clusters reflect different uh, themes or directions or patterns related to this area. Uh, the first theme was related to psychology, social science, social relations, metacognition. And this means there are some work relevant to cyber infrastructures, online environments, teaching environments and learning environments that somehow is touching these topics. And this match one of the themes that we found in the literature review. Another theme, which is the blue one, contains terms about technology, digital learning, education technology, experiential learning. And this matches the second theme that we found in the literature review. However, two or more clusters showed up here that were not showing up in the literature review. The first one are a big clusters about computer science related papers that discuss the technical part, how we implement cyber infrastructures or online environments. And also this part related about related to artificial intelligence uh, with uh, respect to online teachings and online environment. And because the talk and discussion about AI is growing, so it started within computer science and then it become a separate cluster. And I believe that this cluster, the small one, will grow over time, even to exceed computer science. So this is uh, some sort of quantitative analysis that give us a direction about where uh, publications related to uh, cyber infrastructures, online environments are going. This is some sort of quantitative analysis uh, about the top authors based on how many they showed up in publications. And here, the number of links means how many times they collaborated with other authors. Here also top institutions in uh, universities and how many times these institutions do external collaboration with other institutions was relevant to this topic. You find that top institutions like Carnegie Mellon University here are better in collaboration. So they tend to collaborate more with other institutions. These universities like Carnegie Mellon acts like hubs. They will act like the backbone for this network of collaboration and they have responsibility to make everyone connected so when you look at this collaboration network if these universities didn't facilitate the flow of information or research or science relevant to this area they will act instead of hubs they will be blockers so they have a very huge responsibility to disseminate or um, spread the research about this area. So these are some of the findings that we found. This is an overview of our system, the picture. So this, our system is integrated with learning management system, and it is pluggable in a way that if you want to add Canvas, you can connect Canvas, you can connect Moodle. It also con ex uh, linked with external services like Google or Amazon Web Services has database, store information about the students, courses, instructors, material, and it has learning analytics, so it can get insights about interactions, activities, and everything is happening. And it is pluggable in a way that if uh, a professor in another institution wants to collaborate with us, he or she can plug in his tool, and it will show up within uh, SIA. So tools are growing over uh, time. So I can 
go through the screenshots. If we have time, I can give you a demo about the system. One question. In this chart, where would you put the student? Where would you put the teacher? If you were to draw a picture of the student yes. interacting with your, with, your, with your model, where, where would the student and where would the teacher be? So the student and the teacher will be interacting with the user. Yes, with the user interface. And this acts like the tip of the uh, ice curve. It is very simple, easy to use, and it hides all of the complexities, hardware, resources, all of this. This is one of the characteristics of cyber infrastructures. So I uh, can show you a demo. And uh, so this is the landing page for Syed. It has account management. It has information about Syed. It's like an in-progress effort, so every month you'll see updates to it. Once you get started, you can create an account and you can log in. So now I'm logged in, and uh, this is showing my home page. And it shows the projects that I have created on SciEd. You can click on a project. And here you can share learning materials, data, files, codes, anything, any type of file you want to share. It's like GitHub or GitLab. It's like uh, Google Drive, but it is just for us. And you can chat here in real, in real time with other researchers. And only people who are working on this project can see this chat and this data. So I have some of the students at VMI working on a capstone project. They are working this place to share data and files, everything together. Uh, this is one thing, feature. You can here uh, see the courses, choose VMI, and it will show the courses uh, that I am enrolled in as a student or as a teacher. And uh, you can plug in new Canvas accounts. So, for example, I have an account with VMI. I have an account with Virginia Tech. So I can view all the courses from VMI and Virginia Tech in one place. So this is a, a nice way to show a seamless integration of different learning management systems. And this is my tools. Now we have around four tools. But I hope next year we will have double this number and it is growing over time. One of the tools we used in the workshop, Cyber Smart Workshop, is called VizLab. And we are using block based language to construct Python code. And so you can here click, choose one of the projects you have done before, like here. This is an example of how you make a loop. And you can see in real time the code generated in Python and you can run the code online. And so the nice thing about here is that we have students in middle school or high school. They don't have to worry about set up Python or they have not to worry about even learning programming because they are using blocks to construct codes. And uh, this is similar to tools they have used while at high school and middle school. So this step is very small for them and it encourages them to learn programming. Also, we did a tool uh, added here, a plugin for, for cryptography. So this is also, if you want to do encryption using one of these ciphers, you can just drag and drop it. Like for example, here, Caesar cipher. And I can delete this block 
and it is updating the code here. And this is a Caesar cipher that do encryption in Python. If you want to build it from scratch, instead of using a built-in box, uh, you can pick here Caesar cipher. Okay. And you can run the code. And this do encryption for a message like meet you at London Bridge, say 9BF, and it generates the output. You can also invite students or the students can share their code with you by clicking here on this button. Invite a friend to collaborate in real time. And you can submit this code as homework or assignment to Canvas by clicking here and choose your Canvas account. Uh, so it's... Uh, it's a growing effort, and we are trying to, all of these are running online, no need for code setup, or you don't have to worry about what is the hardware, what software, all of these. So as I mentioned earlier, it's like the tip of iceberg. You only see the part top of the water level. You don't have to worry about anything. Else. Uh, one tool here may be relevant to uh, Dr. Colin, he was talking about using videos. So here there is a tool called Collab Education. So what we do here is that students are making uh, offline videos or asynchronous videos, and they are explaining different concepts created by the instructor. So say I'm teaching introduction to Java programming, and these are the concepts or conceptual knowledge that I need to be covered or make sure they are covered by my students. So I add the concepts. A student will come, pick one concept, and create a video explaining it not to me, but to his uh, or her uh, peers. And I found that I tried it in one of my courses. I found that students are getting more engaged in this type because they feel that they have control, they are contributing. They are not just like passive uh, people watching me lecturing, they are participating. And actually some of the students are doing it better than me and explaining some of the concepts. And so when you get that, this is the- How did they, how would someone engage in this or- This is like YouTube. Not the video part, just the whole entire yes. They just sign up for it? Yes, or... sign up. Okay. So now uh, we are restricting it for username and password. Okay. But once you enter the username and password, right. you will can log in and create an account and use it. Okay. Yes. Who owns the software? Is it university? Is that a department project or is that different from project? So this is part of my research project and uh, as part of uh, uh, based on funding from CCI, uh, Commonwealth Cyber Initiative, Southwest Virginia, which is located at Virginia Tech. So this is like a research project and I have uh, two undergraduate cadets or students working on this. I guess I'm just thinking this would be useful for my students. Yes. So would we be able to log in, create accounts, and yes, uh, exactly. And here you can. This is a video I uploaded, for example, and a student will log in, or another student can watch the video. They can provide comments, feedback. They can like the video. It's like YouTube, but it is safe YouTube. Right. I have students who go outside to YouTube, and they come back to me with some misinformation or some videos out there that describe something incorrectly yeah. so this is safe and reviewed by the instructor or the administrator right. um, you can here add a new video and then you select the topic say programming in java and you choose the concept that this video is related to and say a uh, video repository is that videos created by others, not me. So here, uh, say uh, you can open it. 
and you can say I already commented dot say well done and then you can like or dislike okay and this is uh, current work my badges so this will be badges that will show up to the student based on how much he interact with others how much he provide constructive feedback to the videos of others and uh, these badges or digital badges will be shareable so as you can share it to LinkedIn, to twitter and based on previous research digital badges acts as a good motivator or incentives to students or even uh, instructors to uh, <laughs> like motivate them to contribute yeah so that's uh, uh, my the current work we have done and i be more than happy to answer your questions and someone has been thrown in, i've been thrown into teaching python uh last few years so i can be very interested in happening sure and this block blocks are also growing so we add a, a library for cryptography we can add a library for mathematics we can add library for different topics I have a professor from ECE department. They are building a code for a, a, a rare programming language for a special hardware. It's very hard. So we're gonna use this to generate this code also. So it has, it, it's, it, it can go. So, um, Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.